Welcome back to Wave 3 Listens. Elder advisors, if you have a senior in your life, a senior loved one, and they're getting ready to transition into a senior facility, there's a lot that goes into that. Financial planning, estate planning, to protect their assets, all of that balled into one, and you want someone who's compassionate about it. You want a team of professionals. You have that with Elder Advisors. With me now is Larry Weiss, and he is, he is the man on top there with Elder Advisors. Don't go broke in a nursing home. Don't do it, John. Don't, Don't. go broke. Don't go broke in a nursing home, John. Stop it. You don't have to. You don't have to. Uh, for those who have, not, who have not seen you on the show, you're in for a real treat, for one. Hello, Louisville. <laughs> but number two, tell them a little bit about what you do, exactly what you well, do. Well, first of all, I have a passion for what I do. I'm truly blessed. I'm having the time of my life. I've been doing this 23 years. I just got to turn 56 years old last Friday. Full head of hair, little accents of color, but I'm loving life. <laughs> I'm having fun. Uh, I work past 5 o'clock. I take people's phone calls on the weekends. I've got a great team that works with me. But for the viewers that haven't really tuned in to catch Elder Advisors, and first of all, thank you for having me back. Wait a minute, Tammy, the producer. Tammy, Tammy I don't have time to, to sing 790 bottles of beer on the wall right now. No, maybe later. <laughs> thank you, Tammy. Anyway, back to the show, Tammy. Was what we do in a nutshell is we help families transition their loved ones from their homes, John, to assisted living or long-term care. If they're veterans or spouse of veterans, help them qualify for benefits using financial and legal strategies to protect their assets so they don't go broke in a nursing home. We do the financial component. There's almost always a legal component, and that's where Steve Langdon at McNeely Stevenson does a great job mm -hmm. of carrying the ball across the goal line to score for the families, but we have to get it ready for Steve, and I think Denise and Steve are going to be out here on Friday with you promoting and talking about the fact that we have our workshops coming up next week. Uh, we do the monthly workshops, Don't Go Broken Nursing Home. Thank you, Tammy, for reminding me. Uh, Monday, 6 o'clock at the Four Points by Sheraton on Crittenden Drive, and then, of course, Tuesday morning, 10 a.m. at the Hampton Inn in Clarksville on Broadway across from Outback Steakhouse. So we do those once a month, and it gives families an opportunity to really understand what it is. But we do help families protect their assets so they don't go broke in a nursing home because they don't. Because what's so important to understand is for husbands and wives, there is, as Steve calls, special exceptions where we can protect pretty much all of the assets. They don't have to spend everything down. They don't have to do all that silly stuff. And for singles, we can protect half the assets. Well, that's 100% more than most people think they can keep because most people just from talking to their neighbors, well-intentioned they may be, or their brother in Arkansas that went through this five years ago, you don't have to spend everything down. There are strategies developed to protect those assets so they don't go broke in a nursing home. Larry, whenever you're on, it's, it's somewhat of an educational experience for me because I didn't realize how much was involved with estate planning, financial planning, you know, the legal side of it, uh, and also protecting the assets yep. that you spoke of, which may be right. the most important. Right. Um, you have this thing, and I, I want to ask you about this because I don't, here it goes again, I'm going to learn something. The $9,100 promise. What yeah. is the $9,100 promise? Well, I met with a family last night and at 5 o'clock. Because I can assure you, on the legal component, the attorneys are out of the office by 3 o'clock. But a lot of it's financial. It's hand-holding. I give everybody my cell number. Once they become clients, they have everybody's phone number. Because typically, when you get a goofy letter from the state, it's on a Saturday afternoon. And it wigs people out. It wears them out. What do I do? What do I do? So they call us. We kind of calm them down, get them through to Monday. But what happened last night was we had a family come in. Uh, three, of the fa three of the siblings were there. Mom was there. And... Dad is at a community right now in rehab. And what we do is we protect assets to help qualify for benefits, but more importantly, keep some money back for rainy day because once dad does spin down to that $2,000 threshold, there's no money left. So now what do we do for money for hearing aids, eyeglasses, TV remotes? Now they've got to call Greg in Florida and say, hey, Greg, I need you to cough up $300. That's never a good phone call. So we develop strategies to park money so the families don't have to do that because what we're doing is ensuring mom and dad's needs are met. But what happens is not every community in Kentucky and it will allow a family to transition to Medicaid. They are private pay all the way, all the way. Some will tell you, well, we will transition to Medicaid, but it's under their control. They're going to ensure that that family spends their $340,000 there, and then maybe we can work out a bed for you. Most will allow families to transition, whether it's one month, three months, or six months. So one of the most difficult things for families at the beginning is placement, which is what do we do with mom? She's in the nursing home. It's not a safe environment for her to go home. So back to my family last night. They love the community dad is at. And they said, well, they all but promise, I'm going to get a little asterisk next to that, that dad can stay here on Medicaid. 
and I know the facility. You know, Denise knows all the business office people. And I said, really? And I said, did they guarantee you and look you in the eye that, because they're paying $9,100 a month. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. That's a high end, $9,100 a month private pay. And there's modest assets. And I said, did they look you and I and guarantee you that that $9,100 promise is on October 1, dad can transition to Medicaid. And then the hedging began through no fault of the family. Well, they said dad's at the top of the list. And I said, dad and 40 cents will buy an old cup of coffee because that doesn't mean anything. And more than once, I've had to move families from that facility to another facility that would transition to Medicaid. So, and that's something that I've only, only learned doing this for 23 years, is families really get burned. And what happens is they're at the hospital because the hospital certainly wants to take care of mom, get her stabilized, get her mm -hmm. infection down, fix her broken leg, stuff like that. But then they need, to, they need the bed, so they need to discharge her to rehab. What facility they're at, they have no interest in that. They need mom out. Well, what happens is Medicare will typically rehab for 20 days at 100%. Because sometimes you'll hear, well, they'll pay for 100 days. Well, they may. They'll typically pay 100% of the first 20. Any, the, the remaining 80 days they may or may not cover, depending if mom is showing progress, both physically and mentally, for the rehab. So what happens is the families will call me, and much like this property, well, dad's at ABC property. And I'm kind of like, ooh. Because what happens is they're cherry picking. The facility will take that Medicare reimbursement at the full rate, but if Medicare stops after day 20, the family's on the hook for day 21 because they don't have a Medicaid bed. Right now, they don't have one. Well, no one wants to move dad on day 21, so what do they do? They write a check. They agree. They, they're stuck. So if I can get to the families ahead of time, what I try to do is say, you know what? Why don't you consider XYZ, PDQ, apples, peaches, and cream facility because they will transition because we really don't want to have to move mom more than once if we can avoid it. Sometimes we have to and we'll deal with that. But that's where I, when the family told me and there's such modest assets, they said, well, we've got enough money to pay through January. We're willing to wait until January for that bed to become available. And I said, well, let's assume that January 1 that bed becomes available. You just made mom broke. Because mom is still at home and she's doing okay, but then they're completely broke. They put all their eggs in that basket of that $9,100 promise that may or may not come through. And this skill set I'm talking about is nothing families are aware of. They, they don't know. They don't know to think about it. It's not the hospital's job. Their, their job is to fix the person, get them stabilized so they can transport to rehab. But it's a business as well. Sure. It's a business as well. And I don't know if I'm going to see the family or not because I gave them hard love. I said, this is really honest. tough. Yeah. I was extremely honest because I could have, you know, just blowing a lot of smoke and I can do it and do this and do that and not spent time on the $9,100 promise to make the sale. There I said it. Make the sale. Do the close, whatever. But it's not helping the family. And then I guarantee you the family is going to be calling me next week. Hey, you said this would work. Even if I didn't say it, they're going to say I said it. And I'd rather not get the deal because, you know, sometimes you're better off not getting the deal because of all the different moving parts that go with it. I'm kind of like, you know what? I think I'd rather let someone else have it. And that's the problem with the $9,100 promise is it may not be kept, much less fulfilled. See, the advantage to elder advisors, this is what I find interesting, not only your team of experts, but I think the compassion, which I think is evident and I believe is genuine, but also the experience, because you know how these guys are. I know what's coming. You know what's coming. Like you said, I've been there enough to know, and like I'm the same way, like these families that you're referring to. I'm going to say, I don't know. I've never been in this situation, and most people have not. Well, and then um, they said, uh, we'll say the front business office lady's name was Agnes, which it's not. But they said, well, Agnes said they can file for Medicaid, that they really don't like it when we go off and talk to the attorney or the financial people. And I said, I can appreciate that. But what that means, and again, the family does not appreciate this, what that means is they're going to let the family spend down at how much? $9,100. Go broke. And then they'll file the application, and let's hope they get Medicaid. But the problem was the family also had two insurance policies that had cash value each of approximately $5,000. Well, the most that dad can have him qualify is $2,000. So he's already over-resourced by $8,000. And I said, I guarantee you, Agnes, who would say, well, you don't need to engage elder advisors or Steve Lang and Billy Stevens, and we'll do the Medicaid. After they left all the money with the nursing home, and then what the family doesn't fully really appreciate is, this, the, let's say that it's all done, the nursing home says, we're ready to file for Medicaid December 1st. It usually takes a month or two to respond. Well, I can tell you right now, what would have, of course, I kind of exposed the problem with the life insurance is what's going to happen is they're going to get denied in January. 
because dad is over resourced because he had two insurance policies that had cash value to count over that. Well, now they went broke because they were trying to get that promise of $9,100 per month, right? Well, now they're way behind the eight ball because now because they were denied because dad's over resourced on the life insurance, they have got to come up with $9,100 for December, $9,100 for January, and I guarantee a dollar to donuts, $9,100 in February because there's no way they're going to get that insurance moved in two weeks prior to February 1st. Wow. So that's what I told the family, and it was some hard love. And I was very, I'm, I'm much more animated talking to you and to the audience in Louisville right now because I'm worked up about it. So I was, I know it's hard to believe, I was dialed back with the family. But everything I'm relaying to you and to the viewing audience in Louisville is what I said to the family, just not with the energy and the compassion because I'm being respectful. I'm trying not sure. to, I'm not trying to upset the family. My frustration is with the facility. Right. That's where I'm really irritated with. Well, this it's because it's disingenuous yeah, to the family. Very emotional time. I want tough love. I want straight answers because obviously the emotions are tied to the senior loved one yeah. and also protecting assets. And, and I want someone who's going to shoot me straight. And you're not going to get that from a lot of these facilities. Oh, absolutely not. not. No, no. They'll take the money. And then I'm sorry, the Medicare days ran up. How are you going to pay for next month? Mm -hmm. Well, get your credit card out. It's a business. Yep, I understand. It's I understand. a business. Okay, coming up here, we talked about elder advisors and their team of professionals. You're going to meet one of those professionals, if you would. Tell me a little bit about our next guest. Jeffrey Hurst. I have a huge man crush on Jeffrey <laughs> Hurst at Remax Properties East. Is right. that right? Yeah. That is right. Remax Properties East. And, you know, I have, everybody says, some people say they have regrets, some don't. I do have a regret I didn't meet Jeff Hurst sooner because he does a phenomenal job of taking care of my clients and more often than not, taking lemons and turning it into lemonade for clients to protect assets when it comes to real estate. All right, you'll meet Jeff next. Again, uh, one of the team members of Elder Advisors. Don't go broke in a nursing home. We'll tell you more of great information, critical information, if you're in that situation with Elder Advisors and Larry Weiss. We'll be right back. Never seen anything like you around here before. You're gonna make an awful lot of people very happy. <laughs> yes, sir. Pay off big time. Coming soon, Louisville's own Derby City Gaming. For details, visit DerbyCityGaming.com. In a perfect world, you know, I, I wish I just had the ability to bring these clients in and find a way to put them right back to where they were before the accident happened. Well, what we do is kind of the closest we can to do that. We want to make sure that, they, that they're not kicked out of their home or not able to pay their light bill. We want to try to get them that wage loss ASAP. Our goal is to make them feel like their lives have been changed as little as possible, knowing that, that they're dealing with a very life-changing experience. And to accomplish that feels pretty cool. Win a house, help a child. Hi, I'm Shannon Cogan, here to tell you about Norton Children's Hospital Raffle. You could win this home in Norton Commons or a 2018 2 Series BMW convertible from BMW of Louisville and $10,000 cash. This year, if you buy your ticket early, you have the chance to win these additional prizes during the monthly drawing. You could win it all. Tickets, just $100. Call 559-KIDS, visit home and BMWRaffle.com, our open houses, or these sponsors. We are turning lemons into lemonade here with Elder Advisors. Uh, Larry Weiss is with us, along with Jeff Hurst. So, uh, a humble guy. I've already met him. He's Jeff. a beautiful man. He's very humble and shy. He is very humble. So, you go ahead. Thank you. Praise him. Thank you. Um, <laughs> was that Tammy? Yeah. Uh, the producer said to dial back your beauty quotient. Camera three's <laughs> kind of blurbing on it, so bring it down. Uh, as I said time and time again, when we're trying to help families protect assets, I want to be the dumbest man in the room. And I surround myself by top talent, and Jeff Hurst with Remax Properties East is one of those people because I don't do real estate. I don't do legal either. Steve Langham, Emilio Stevenson does the legal part. But often there's real estate involved. And I know Fancy Fulton's been on talking about the Indiana part of that. Jeff represents the Kentucky part because oftentimes there's real estate involved and often the bad news is the house is an asset. But the good news is we can turn that into money. We can turn that into a legacy for the families and also ensure that moms 
or dad's needs are met through the sale proceeds of the home and still keep money back for a rainy day. So when the real estate's involved, I always refer clients to Jeff Hurst. And before I turn it over to Jeff, a perfect example is it gets really upsetting when clients don't do what you tell them to do. And we had a family about two, three weeks ago where I was singing your praises and I said, you need to call Jeff Hurst. Well, my son-in-law is getting his license next week. You want to give him a listing. And I'm like, that is just a train wreck. Don't let this poor kid cut his teeth on such an emotional train. It's grandma's house or whatever it is for Pete's sake. Don't let him cut his teeth on. But of course, they knew best. And then two days later, they text me a message. There's been a family problem now with difference of opinion. And I'm like, that's why I was trying to get Jeff Hurst of Remax Properties East involved because Jeff knows what to do. And he can so often take those lemons and turn them into lemonade. There we go. Yeah, Jeff, real quickly, yeah, there's real estate and then there's elder real estate or something in this situation. Both are, it's not only good information, but it's also emotional for families, right? Absolutely, it is. Usually you're dealing with mom and dad's house or sure. grandma and grandpa's house. It's very sensitive when you walk into that house because usually there's some dating issues that need to be updated. We want to try to spend the minimum amount of money to maximize their dollars coming back. And with the team of Larry and, and Steve Langdon getting it together, we just... It's turnkey with us. And, and you both weigh in here, if you don't mind. It's, it's not as simple as just selling the house, let's turn this into cash. No. There's a way to do this that is best for the family. Right. Best for the family. And when I say best for the family, in what regard, Larry? Well, a perfect example is when Fancy was on last week. And don't forget, Tammy's reminding me, we do have our upcoming workshops next week. Okay. Monday night, 6 p.m. at the <laughs> Four Points by Sheraton on Crinton Drive at 6 o'clock. We start promptly at 6. And then, of course, Tammy, I'm getting to it. Uh, then Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock, <laughs> at the Hampton Inn in Clarksville on Broadway across from Outback Steakhouse. And of course, Steve Langdon and Neil Stevenson will be there as well to kind of deal with the legal component. But on the financial, but back to what you were saying, John, was Fancy was relaying the story, which was really on point with your question, which was she was involved in real estate transaction, and the family was quite flippant. about oh, don't matter what they're selling for, the nursing home is going to get it. Well, no, that's not really the case, because everything we have to disclose to the state. It has to be at a proper value. Jeff knows that. We can't, you know, we play everything by the book. Everything is disclosed to the state. And like anything, we want the highest and best use and value for that property. And Jeff did a tremendous job. There was a local bank. Uh, the dad had very modest assets. And the family, the property was in Kentucky. The daughter was in Indiana. They were placing dad in Indiana. And dad had a property in Kentucky. And with that, Jeff, I'm going to let you talk about how you made magic with that. Yeah, that was, ended up being a foreclosure, which just creates tenfold the work there but we actually got that deal closed they were happy but it was a lot of work to be done and, and Steve Langdon again helped a lot with that as well but you got to work very closely with with the families and like I said again be sensitive to their needs Jeff is there is there a checklist when you when you acquire a home or you're working with a family and you're trying to help them sell the home and, and maximize the value is there a checklist of things to do things you can do inexpensively to max, maximize that yeah. absolutely I, I focus on three things and, and, and doing them as cheap as we possibly can but still looks looks nice it's light fixtures it's paint and it's flooring is, and that, that will really dress up a house. And obviously getting the house empty, because again, at that point in time, there's been a lot of clutter probably created in there. And you gotta be careful saying the word clutter so that you don't upset sure. anybody again. But it, yeah. it's very important we get that clean. Like stage. you said, probably a lot of the kiddos, are around, they were raised in that home. Absolutely. So be, so be careful. And Larry, I think it's important that you're kinda, you're, you're the top of the food chain here in that you understand the compassionate side and you right. make sure everyone's working together. Right. Because there's probably gonna be a related question that is out of your field of expertise, no offense, where you can connect the right people and the right players at Elder Advisors. Which is, which is really why I go back to Jeff at Remax Properties East, right. is because if they are cleaning out that home, because we're dealing with kids that are the sandwich generation, they're working 10 hours a day, they don't have time for this, Jeff knows his people, whether it's guys with 40 yard dumpsters and stuff like that can help get that stuff done and affect that. But to go back to what Jeff was saying, he really minimized his contribution with this property that was in the foreclosure. This poor guy spent hours on the phone with the bank their mortgage department, you know, we can't answer these questions. I mean, it was, I mean, the guy was really banging his head against the wall. Yes. So he really, he's being disingenuous and he said, just made a phone call, got it done. I mean, I almost, I knew it wouldn't, but I almost thought I was going to lose a relationship with this guy because I gave him a big limit. You do that on a daily basis. Though. Only because you're so deserving. <laughs> okay. Old. But on the house, it was completely unintentional, but he kept his nose to the grindstone and broke through, broke through all the morass of phone calls and we can't help and got it done. No one else would have done that. And truly, I think he did it because of the relationship that we have. If it had been anybody else, I know if I was a realtor, I would have said, there's nothing I can do and simply moved on. But he stuck with it. So, you know, sometimes you get the bear, sometimes the bear gets you. 
Well, in this one, the bear got all of us, but at the end, we got it across the finish line. The family actually had a net sales proceed, a closing check to the family, which they never envisioned would happen, and we got money put back for a rainy day. But that was because, you know, we can't cherry pick our deals. Some of these are really tough, and Jeff kept his nose to the grindstone and got it done. That's why he's my Kentucky Medicaid realtor, and that's why I wanted that family to use him, because I can never anticipate what problems are going to come up. And usually they do listen to me. It's for the benefit of the family. It's for the benefit of mom and dad. All right. Uh, again, there's some information on the screen. Let's put up the information, too, about the workshops as well. Because I do think there's a lot of questions you may have. You may be watching, and there's a number of questions, yeah. whether it be financial, estate planning, protecting right. assets. Some of those questions can be answered, and you can talk to the experts at Elder Advisors right there. Okay? Absolutely. And, and in a nutshell, I think it's important because when all this emotional turmoil and all of these financial questions come to light here, you need really stability of going, we've got this. Yeah, it yeah. gets tough sometimes. And I just had a family the other day. They said, well, this is, okay, this is going to be pretty easy now. And I said, you know what, I've done it, we're, we're maybe four or five years ago, Said, yeah, sure, but now it's kind of like it's still going to be problematic. It's still going to be stressed, <laughs> but we're going to walk you through it. All righty, we'll be right back on Wave 3 Listens Live with Elder Advisors. Recently, we put mom into a nursing home. We had no idea the cost would be so high, and we became overwhelmed with stress, worrying about how to pay all these bills without losing all of mom's money. That's when we called Elder Advisors. Elder Advisors helped guide us through this difficult process, all while saving us time, money, and giving us peace of mind, knowing we had a plan for mom's hard-earned dollars. They taught us things nobody else could have. We couldn't have done it without Elder Advisors. Don't go broke in a nursing home. If your loved one has been injured or is being abused or neglected in a nursing home, there is something you can do. Call the Nursing Home Injury Hotline at Hughes and Coleman. When you do something for someone special, you put in a little more effort to get it right. And so do we. Turn to the experts you trust at Jarbo's Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. The people at Sam Aguiar was very attentive. They made sure that my problem was first on the list. They stayed in contact with me. They made me feel welcome. Don't go broke in a nursing home. Larry, invite everyone out for great information. Thank you, John, and certainly I'm glad to be back at Wave 3 Listens Live today. I want to remind everybody, don't prejudge your situation. Always keep an open mind. We protect assets. Even if someone's in a nursing home today or about to, we protect assets, so you don't go broke in a nursing home. All right. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on the show. Pleasure Appreciate you. Larry, always a pleasure. Effervescent. It's always going to be different. I promise you that. I hope so. <laughs> Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow right here on Wave 3 Listens Live. Have a good one.